This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the founder of Monumental Minerals and the newly appointed CEO of Monumental Minerals, Mr. Jamil Sater and Mr. Max Sally. Max, Jamil, how are you? Fantastic. Max, Very let- good to be here. Thank it- you. It's great to have you both here. Let me start with you, Max. You're 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 the founder of Monumental. You and I have had conversations about the critical metal space for the past year. We've talked rare earths. You and I initially met, oh God, I want to say maybe, and I'm dating myself here now, maybe five or six years ago, maybe longer than that, in Argentina, looking at several lithium projects. And even then it was clear that the macro trend as it related to the electrification and decarbonization of everything um, was only going in one direction, right? And so here we are, fast forward to 2022, and you just signed a letter of intent to acquire up to 75% of the drill-ready Salar de Laguna Blanca project um, in from Lithium Chile. And so I got to ask you, tell me how long you've been working on this, because I know behind the scenes, it's something that you've been very excited about for quite some time. Well, as you know, so I, I met you uh, when I was doing corporate development for Advantage Lithium in Argentina. I think you're right. It was about five years ago, 2017. We had the, the Kachari asset. Uh, that company was was sold to Orocobre at the time at the bottom of the market for $70 million. It was an all-stock transaction. Orocobre, when we received the shares, was about two dollars two twenty five and and they ran at twelve bucks. So anyone that held on did extremely well in that transaction. And I've always kind of wanted to get back into lithium. You know, I have always been an investor in lithium when when things went sour for a few years in, in eighteen nineteen I was buying stuff at the bottom and, and making some big gains. And obviously now with with monumental, you know, the rare earth aspect is an amazing project. That took a while to get done. But what I've been working on for six months is adding something to that company. And I think lithium brine was the right addition, uh, as you said, with the macro uh, macro world going now in that, in that direction. And, and so, you know, looking at projects, as you know, um, the reason why it attracted me to lithium Chile is uh, I've been watching the company for a long time. Uh, I met the CEO, Steve Cochran, when I was working at Advantage. He was working for Fission Uranium. We were in the same office. And so... I followed the story for a while, and you know I think he's the third largest landholder besides SQM and Albemarle in in Chile. And you know what specific asset I liked was the lithium brine cesium asset he had, the large Laguna Blanca. And this asset, what's interesting is it's only a six-hour drive, which is not far on that part of the world from Kachari, which is advantage lithium. And so it's in the lithium triangle. Um, and it's a, and the best thing personally is I like the brine, you know, all these hard rock deposits and all the stuff in Nevada where, you know, water is an issue or you're going to have to come up with new technology, you know, brine always works best. Uh, and the cesium aspect is very, very interesting too, as we are originally a, a rare earth company. So, you know, I think the mix is perfect. Uh, the closest producing solar to Laguna Blanca is, uh, solar de Atacama, which is one of the biggest producing solars of lithium in the world. And, uh, that's something that I hopefully, you know, one day we can, we can see out of Laguna Blanca. Jamil, with your technical expertise, right? Um, give me give me the 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 overview of how this fits in well with the flagship, which is the Jemmy project, right? Um, yeah, well, there's there's certain um, there, there's definitely a lot of synergies between the two. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, first and foremost, uh, both of these projects, both the Jemmy and or Gemi and um, <laughs> and Lizetta Blanca, uh, they are targeted projects um, to provide metals and uh, raw materials that are required. Or uh, EVs, and um, in, in this, uh, you know, I've got a diagram up here in front of me. Um, I guess you can't see it, but that shows that in the next 10 to 15 years, um, almost every vehicle manufacturer will have between 50 and 100 percent of their vehicles as EVs, and they need to get that raw material from somewhere. Um, and and having have it being positioned to have these two projects that are able to provide or may be able to provide uh, that auto industry with those raw materials, I think is, is, um, is a huge benefit. 
In terms of the, the project itself, you know, I think that in addition to the, the, the lithium, which has some, some pretty nice uh, grades, it's up to 1230 uh, milligrams per liter in the brines and up to 1450 ppm in the sediments, the, the cesium is, is another really interesting story. And it's, it's one that um, you don't really see very often. I don't think I've ever seen it before um, in, a, in a solar setting. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, uh, Max kind of uh, alluded to, to, this, to the cesium and, you know, the fact that it's needed for, for 5G. But it's also uh, quite needed for drilling fluids in the, in the oil and gas industry, which, um, you know, as we've seen currently, um, that industry is, is, um, is on a tear. Onetair is putting it mildly. We're seeing commodity markets literally break. We saw the nickel market, um, you know, it, it explode to the upside here the past three days. Um, there's exchanges that are shut down for days on end. We're seeing simultaneous bans on exports and imports, the same commodities, by the way, um, by the U.S. and then countered by Russia we could be into a prolonged resource war that doesn't last days or months the way we've seen in past, you know, mini bull cycles, but that lasts for years on end. How do you go about, Jamil, developing both of these projects that obviously have, you know, the potential to help contribute and, and ease um, some of some of the, uh, the supply crunch that is already here, right? Um, the demand portion of it's only going to get more pronounced. Uh, the supply crunch already exists in several commodity markets. And I think with rare earths, with Gemi or Gemi, and with lithium, with Laguna Blanca, you're positioning yourself pretty well. How do you unlock the value from both projects? Um, so really, it's, it, 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 it needs some, uh, some good, good technical work. It, it needs to be, um, uh, we start with the Lithium Chile Laguna Blanca project. <clears throat> Uh, Lithium Chile has done some some amazing work to date. You know they've done um, uh, they've, they've sal- sampled a lot of the solar for for brines, uh, surface brines, and for sediments. And they've also done a uh, geophysics survey, uh, an EM survey or electromagnetic survey. Uh, basically, what that does is um, it's looking for the saltiest water underground. So the uh, the Saltier the water, typically the higher the lithium uh, content in, in this context. Um, and they've identified a 100 to 200 meter thick uh, unit with a surface area that is about a uh, surface uh, footprint that's about 10 square kilometers. Um, and really what we want to do is start with that. And like Max had said, uh, the project is drill ready. So we, um, what we'll do to, to, to be starting this project is... Um, is putting some uh, some drill holes into the into this uh, solar to see to see what we've got and to see how extensive this is and to to kind of confirm some of these uh, these geophysical targets. In terms of Jemmy, um, you know, I, I was actually just talking with our geophysical contractor today. Um, we'll be getting some preliminary results. Uh, I'm thinking in the next week. And from those, we'll be, um, be using those to, to make decisions of where we go look in the field. And um, again, just like, uh, like Lithium Chile and, and Laguna Blanca, uh, Jimmy is drill ready um, and drill permitted. So we, we hope to have drills turning there uh, by, the, um, by the end of Q2. So just to be clear, it sounds like multiple drill programs this year, one for lithium, one for rare earths. Anything to add to that, Max? Yeah, you know, the nice things about, like you said, these projects is, is the drill the drill permitted or drill ready projects. You know, in Chile, uh, getting along with the community, as, as you were aware, we were in Argentina together, is, is huge. And there's been a number of companies that have approached Lithium Chile to do a deal, uh, and they've just rejected the other companies. You know, I get along very well with Steve. He's got good community relations. And to have, a, a, you know, a truck-mounted drill rig go and drill 50 to 100 meter holes at the little blanket that the locals have approved uh, it is a huge thing. Because as we know, if they don't approve it, I don't care how you can have the solar to add a camera. If the locals don't like it, good luck, right? And the same with, with Jemmy is, is the locals are okay with what we're doing. And uh, these, are, these are, you know, they don't have to be the world's biggest projects because of the grade, they can be very, very economic. And, and so the community relations with both, with both parties on both assets is good for us. And I think, uh, 
you know, with the market, who, who would not want us to get drilling right away? And that's what we have the ability to do. Both lithium um, and rare earth projects have the potential, you know, to, to, to add value very, very quickly. Um, Jamil, with the market cap where it's at, I, I, I know that you had something to add to that. With the market cap where it's at, you got to be excited about advancing both these projects, given the tiny market, market cap monumental is being given credit for. Uh, absolutely. So uh, with these projects, I really think that this is going to, to add value for, for our shareholders. And I really think that, um, uh, that again, given the market for, for, for uh, raw materials, <clears throat> for EVs, and the electrification of, of our world, um, and the, the price appreciation of both lithium and, and rare earths, um, I, I really expect to see the market cap of this company, of, of our company, to grow a lot. I'm looking forward to an exciting year. Um, it's already an exciting time in the commodity space. I've been waiting for 2022 um, for years on end, and it seems like it's all happening simultaneously. So definitely exciting times. Max, Jamil, a pleasure to have you on as always. Thank you so much as always. Thank you very Jim. much. All right. Cheers, guys.